What the heck? Took on. Two new series in one week? No f***ing way. Wacky Calc Wednesday. Wednesday! So, I saw a post on Reddit from this person. They did a, a post on r slash calculus about a very, very cool integral. And so this will be the first installment of this Wacky Calculus Wednesdays or Wacky Integral Wednesdays, since I imagine most of them will be integrals. Derivatives are usually a lot easier, but unless there's something really, really crazy, um, then we'll go down that path. Uh, this will include things like differential equations, if I feel like it. I guess evaluating series is still analysis, but, but if it's like small, simple stuff, then that's going to go with the, the Monday Math Nuggets. And if it's continuations or of, of like previous, like, series of things that I'm doing, then that's just going to go on Fridays. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to call, you know, that Fridays will just be the regular videos that I'm used to, but Wacky Calculus Wednesdays or Wacky Calc will just be weird integrals, maybe some weird derivatives, strange differential equations if I feel like it kind of things, whereas the math nuggets are like strictly just small little clips that I can do in 10 minutes or less. Um, so this one's actually going to be a really quick video, but the point is is that Wednesdays will be specifically calculus, calculus problems. Okay, so let's talk about this very, very cool integral. It's got a lovely solution, so let's check it out. Check it out, 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 check it out! Okay, so the post that I saw had something very, very similar to this integral, although I'm changing it ever so slightly to have a, a slightly more elegant solution. The person who posted this simply didn't include the first factor of x, it just changes the, um, the answer slightly, but it's 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 completely the same principle. Uh, I will leave a link to this Reddit post in the description. It's from r slash calculus. So the question was, what's the integral of x times the square root of x times the cube root of x times the fourth root of x, etc. And that goes on forever. So what we have is an infinitely nested radical where each radical is getting larger and not not but the, the the index of the radical is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So first we start with the regular x times the square root of all of the stuff inside which is x times the cube root of all of this stuff inside which is x times the fourth root of x and so on and so forth. So we have every single one over n power or nth root in this nested radical. And so this looks like an absolute monster, but it's actually not that bad because there's two things we need to recognize is that this is the same as if we started with the larger outside one. What what if we're not taking any roots at all? What power is that? That's a power of one, right? X to the first power, which is the same thing as X to the one over one. So I could write it as sort of a first root, right? The first root of a number is, is like the first power of a number. It doesn't change anything. And what's the symbol of the radical without the number? That's presumed to be the square root, right? So we have the first root of X times the second root of X times the third root of X times the fourth root of x, dot, 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 and that goes forever. And so what we actually have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So every single positive integer appears as an index of a root in this problem. And this, again, didn't really si seem to simplify it. It was just to show that the pattern continues all the way to the beginning. But what's really nice about roots and radicals is that they're, this, this cumbersome symbol, this radical symbol, is actually rather silly. There's a much better way of talking about roots, and that's by using fractions, right? The, the cube of a number is raising it to the third power, and the cube root has to undo that by raising it to the power that cancels three and brings it down to one. It's one-third, right? So the third root of a number is that number to the third power, the one-third power. The square root is that number to the one-half power. The 27th root is that number to the 1 over 27 power. And every single integer in this nested, uh, infinite nested radical appears as an index, and so we will have somewhere in here, x to 1 over every integer as a power. But because it's nested, they're all going to impact each other. So here's how we're going to rewrite this. We're going to write it first as the first x, right? And then the second x, and then the third x, and then the fourth x, and then we're just going to let that continue inward forever. And then we're going to bring these outside brackets. Now, what's the outside radical? That's the first root, right? 1 over 1 power, also the first power, so it's actually not changing anything, right? It's just the 1 over 1 power. This is just sort of to show that the pattern is consistent and continues forever from the start to the finish. And the second root, or square root, as we're used to, is actually the 1 over 2 power. 
The cube root is actually the 1 over 3 power, and the fourth root is actually the 1 over 4 power, because they each individually cancel out their respective powers, right? 1 over 1 cancels with 1, 1 over 2 cancels with 2, 1 over 3 cancels with 3, and 1 over 4 cancels with 4, and this will continue going in forever and ever. The thing that's special about this, though, is that this power interacts with this power, and both of these powers distribute onto this power, or multiply onto that power, and all three of these powers multiply onto the one-fourth power, because they're all nested. So each power is going to be successively multiplied onto those things as we distribute the power onto the product inside each of the parentheses, because powers distribute onto products, right? So this one over one power is going to distribute onto this x and everything else inside then this 1 over 2 power is going to distribute onto this x and everything else inside, and so on and so forth, right? It's always x times some product of, times some other thing, right? It's x times some other thing. And so we can actually combine all of these powers by simply multiplying them together, right? Which is not too difficult, but we just have to take it one term at a time. So this is going to be equal to the integral of x to the 1 over 1 power, right? That's the first one. And then the rest of this inside is going to be multiplied by 1 over, it's going to be raised to the 1 over 1 and 1 over 2 power. But when you combine powers to powers, you have to multiply them, right? So this x will be raised to the 1 over 1 times 1 over 2. So we have 1 over 1 times 2 power. And then the next x inside will be raised to the 1 over 1 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 power. So we'll have 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 as the power. And then this fourth x will be simply raised to the 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 power. And then this will just continue, right? We'll constantly have an increasing product of each successive integer in the denominators of these powers, right? So that will go forever, like so. But when we have successive products of integers like that, we have a specific name for that. That's called the factorial of that integer, right? So we can write these things as x to the power of 1 over 1 factorial times x to the power of 1 over 2 factorial, right? Because factorial, n factorial is just n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1 if we're talking about positive integer inputs to the function. Of course, there's the analytic continuation using the gamma function, but we're just talking about the original definition of the factorial function as of right now. 1 times 2 times 3 is 3 factorial, so we have x to the 1 factorial times x to the 2 factorial, uh, sorry, x to the 1 over 1 factorial times x to the 1 over 2 factorial times x to the 1 over 3 factorial and then times x to the 1 over 4 factorial, right? We're just using the definition of a factorial, and that product will keep going forever and ever. And now what we want to do is remember the other fact about powers before we use the fact that powers to powers make the product of the powers. But now that we're multiplying stuff with all the same base, namely x, we have to add the powers. So this quite clearly becomes the integral of x to the power of 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus dot dot dot, dx. So it's x to this infinite sum of powers, right? 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, etc., etc., which means we can combine them into an infinite sum, right? So what we actually have here is the integral of x to the power of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n factorial dx, right? And that looks very, very familiar, doesn't it? Except it's starting at 1 instead of 0, and we'll see. When we plug in 0, we'll get 1 over 0 factorial, and from the uh, recursive definition of the factorial function, you can easily derive that 0 factorial has to be equal to 1. So if I start at n equals 0, what I'll really be doing is just adding 1 to this whole series. So to be sure, I have to subtract 1 away, because I want to keep the, the expression, I want to keep the expression equal to the same thing. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of x to the power of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. But because the n equals 0 term is equal to 1, I have to also subtract 1 from that power. But now we have a certain expression here. We know exactly what the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial is. This is a definition, and it comes from the Taylor series of the exponential function, right? If the numerator was x to the n, or, or, or t to the n, for example, then this sum would be exactly e to the power of t. But of course, we have only 1 in the numerator, which means t must have been chosen to be 1. So this sum is exactly equal to the constant e to the first power, or just e, which means 
the thing that we had inside this expression the whole time, this infinite nested uh, radical, is actually equal to, in the limit, x to the power of e minus 1, which is just fantastic. I mean, that's such a lovely simplification, a lovely piece of mathematics that I saw on Reddit, which is, you know, one of the few things that's actually nice to see on Reddit. Cameo from Trusty Cup of Joe here. If y'all get me to a thousand subscribers, like I'm trying to do right now, uh, I'm going to do merch for um, various things that I've mentioned on this channel. For example, we'll have Trusty Cup of Joe mugs, Trusty Cup of Joe shirts if people want that, uh, What the Hectagon shirts, etc., etc. Point is, we need to finish this... Um, we need to finish this integral because we're about to finish the video. And all we have, really, despite e being an irrational or, and transcendental number, this will still behave using the reverse power rule because the power rule is usually associated with differentiation. This is anti-differentiation. So when you integrate x to a power with respect to x, you simply raise that power by 1 and then divide by that new power. So this final answer of this entire question of all these nested integrals is quite simply x to the power of e divided by e. And what are we forgetting? We can't forget that arbitrary constant at the end because we didn't specify bounds, and so we don't know which antiderivative it is, so we have to be careful and add constant. So that is the final answer to our question. What is the integral of these infinite nested radicals, which turned out to be each positive integer root of x nested inside of each other, which allowed us to use this factorial fact uh, use this use uh, factorials based on the fact that powers to powers multiply and then we could use the fact that multiplying things of the same base you simply add their exponents which led us to this infinite series representation of e which allows us to derive this amazing conclusion right here so this has been the first installment of wacky calculus wednesdays or wacky integral wednesdays whatever i end up doing it's probably like i said mostly going to be integrals but i think that's just a lovely result and i had to share it when i saw it so there you go wonderful stuff Stay tuned for a continuation of the series about rational zeta sums. Uh, I'll probably have that released on Friday or Sunday. I'm not sure yet, but uh, Monday and Wednesdays are now going to be dedicated to these two series. Again, Monday, Math Nuggets, where we have uh, quick maths in 10 minutes or less, um, and Wacky Integral Wednesdays, where I show very, very cool integral problems. And if anybody knows of any fun integral problems that they haven't seen recently on YouTube or they'd like me to evaluate on camera, please just send them to me in the comments or email me. I'm always looking for more cool math to do. So thank you for watching and bye-bye. Uh,